Ooh, what is up guys, and of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with Jules Rule, of course, the Skyrender. And today we're going to against, of course, the marvelous and so, so dangerous Hayden in, of course, a Wi-Fi battle. And, uh, yeah, he was looking for battles and definitely wanted people to, you know, take it easy with the Tapus and Yubis. And really, I don't want to use them really myself, so I took the challenge and he actually was looking for specifically me later on that night. And yeah, my team is Shinook, Oricorio, Mega Like a Sam. Basically, Mega Like a Sam has got a Trace Beast Boost, and also with, of course, the Sand team, Magic Guard kind of helps out. Plus, of course, and being immune to the likes of Poison for, from Toxic Pack while I am in the Magic Guard. Uh, then we have, of course, Lissand Rock, Stout Lin, and Gigal. Day 3 are basically here to sweep, um, see the way they kind of fit in. And uh, yeah, we're going against, of course, a Toxic Pack because that is something you have to deal with every freaking Wi Fi battle. Kamo, which actually is super dangerous, Alola Marowak and Raichu, which are also very, very versatile. Definitely Raichu could do a number on me. Tapu Bolo, and then we'll have, of course, Delmice. Uh, my Shinook is not going to be super, super interesting for this game because there's so many things that takes it on. So I'm actually going to lead with that and uh, mainly get a Spore off. Hopefully it doesn't lead with Tapu Bolo or Delmice, because if so, then I can't Spore them. But mainly here, I really hope he starts off with his Toxic Pack so I can spore it, lease it, something like that. And mainly the idea here is that somewhere down the line, we lose it and hope that the other ones can do something. And I really mean something because this is a tough team. So, with all of this said, let's go. So, right, I'm gonna lead off with, of course, Cumberdale. So, any Salad's Finger <laughs> fans here, they might get, to, of course, reference. So, he starts off with, of course, Toxic Pack. And like I said, Going to try to go for a spore. He gets the free toxic spikes up. It's fine. I mean, it's frustrating, but it's um, fine. As here comes the spore, and we get that out of the way. Now, toxic pack being asleep is not a big disadvantage for him since it's actually is quite frustrating anyway to kill, which is in the end what kind of matters. He'll actually deal with Delmice here as I actually decide to switch out and go to my Tassadar, Dalek Sam. But here's the thing. I cannot take a Shadow Claw from this guy, no way in hell, even though I track Shadow Ball, I cannot take Shadow Claw, and Alakazam is such an important Pokemon for my uh, situations, I really need to switch out as he's gonna go for Jara Ball, which is super effective damage, but I am slow as all hell, so it doesn't affect me as much. So from this point out, I'm basically gonna go for Moonblast and want to see out whether or not he's of course Azul Vested, but also whether or not I can force it down a little bit. Because Moonblast should do good damage on it, but that is not good damage, which only means one thing, and a very, very scary thing at that, that I need him below 50% if I want to be able to kill him with a Shadow Bolt from, of course, Alakazam. Because this Mon is just that much more threatening due to, of course, being a Soul Vested. So, Hayden will let it, of course, stay in, which means that he will KO my Shinook, but at the same time, I get him down, but just not enough. I really need another course hit on it, and without the course residual damage from spikes or stealth rocks on this team, I might not actually be able to pull that off. So I'm gonna bring a course Shishio, which of course is uh, my oh so powerful Oricorio, which I really, really, really like. As he's gonna bring in Shred Shoe, I'm gonna go for Hurricane Sally, I will miss, and um, you know, that's just the nature of Hurricane, really. So I'm gonna side switch out, bring a Vulcan to Gigalith with Sandstream, Assault Vested. Variant, maybe not as viable, but you know, I really just wanted to try it out as he just gonna go for Volt Switch, being of course a smarter player. Volt Switch will not do a whole lot, or I mean, I'm as old as I guess it's okay damage there, but really during the sand and everything else, I'm being kind of fine. So he's gonna go to Swole here, and I'm basically gonna sack my Gigalith. I don't want to switch into Tabubulu, but he will over predict and go for a Stone Edge. And the reason that's a bad thing, and I really can't stress this enough is because while Superpower might not actually kill me, a Horn Leech or of course um, Woodhammer would of course KO me. But Stone is gonna land here and of course I go in to survive it and I'm gonna retaliate with a Heavy Slam and just flatten the Bolo. I didn't think you could want it KO that mom, but that, that it's a possibility. It's definitely a possibility and I was like, oh shit. That is such a massive opening for me. So he's gonna bring up back Shred Shoe, and since the sand is up, I know I can just bring in Ronsei on my Lissand Rock and take the hit from it because of course the extra boost in special defense due to the sand stream itself. And uh, yeah, I mean Psyche comes through here and it doesn't do 
insane amount of damage due to it. And I am, of course, really here to go for a Stone Edge. I don't need to go to Cell Rock due to me being Sand Rush. It's kind of overkill with, of course, being Jolly max speed. But Sand Rush still kind of pulls through with, of course, possible Scoffers. And I've seen people use Raichu with Scoffs. So it's, it's not completely out of the question. So anyway, he's going to go to Wallington. And I have a big issue here, and that issue is that I really, really can't KO it naturally. Now, I could switch into Alakazam, I could do that play, but at the same time, I just really, really wanted to see the out um, damage output from Ronse. And um, I'm gonna take this, of course, opportunity to go for a Sword Stance, basically maximize my power and hope I connect, of course, the Zone Edge, because it's always a possibility that you not. And... Um, I will say this, Lissandra really, really, really are ferocious with, of course, the likes of Sword Stance, but its main issue is, of course, no ground stab or, I mean, ground move, not having Earthquake is really, really frustrating for a situation like this, but, of course, the regress, its rain will disappear. I couldn't hit him, of course, with a super effective hit, such, of course, Earthquake. Now, Stone Edge will hurt if I connect it. Question is, will I take it out? And we're going to take, of course, a Gamble or a Shot in the Dark, because I'll fall after this connection anyway, as it sadly is a very very shy of a KO, but I do get him down pretty darn low, so I'm completely fine by this, as of course my Lysandra is gonna fall due to poison, but I think it proven his point, I was actually quite satisfied with the damage output here, so thank you Ronse. So anyway, I'm gonna bring Tassadar yet again in here, as I can just from this situation go for free Calm Mind, which is the whole idea with of course the likes of this Pokemon. Um, it simply is one of those cases where I'm, due to of course the nature of Toxic Spec being super super naturally defensive, there are only so many things you can do when he clearly tried to actually sack it to get some momentum, but seeing that I was able to start setting up, he started of course making the play that has to be made, of course stress playing, which is kind of tough considering that I go for a Psychic here, which is sadly a 2 hit KO on the Flarowak. And had he sacked it, he would have get a bit, much better opening with Marowak than he got here, due to him actually surviving that hit, which is just incredible. So he's gonna bring Ron Burgundy, and uh, I really, really was thinking, can I KO it for your Shadow Ball? I really, I am unsure, I really am, and I basically, no, I'm not gonna risk it. I just, I'll lose the game if I lose uh, my Alaka Sam, because that Raichu just wins the game for him. So, at this point, I basically switched out and just tried to take, of course, a Jar Ball. And it does a lot of damage, even though it's a quote unquote, you know, resisted hit. As he's gonna bring Shred Shoe as I go for Hurricane. Now connect it, but that is just not enough. And uh, I will be KO'd by any move from this guy. So, I am better off sacking Gigalith, which is clearly exactly what's gonna do, and set up a Sandstream. And then, of course, bring in, of course, my Southland, or the Beast Ball Falf, is what we're gonna call him, or just Falf for short. But according to Beast Ball, so hey, Beast Ball Falf is probably a thing. Um, but yeah, Thunder clearly takes us out, and that was definitely overkill. But the hell, using Thunder, that is dangerous. You know, connecting that edge, so much damage. And I mean, in the sand too, damn. So anyway, I get myself poison, and that's quite alright, as we are just gonna go for a facade this time, because as stated, Toxapex are so damn relevant in this meta, so one really has to optimize everything one can, and facade just bops the Toxapex. So I was pretty scared here that he would switch in, of course, his Delmise, he's actually gonna bring Smaug, which of course is the combo, and I was thinking, you know, I wanna test this out, how much does a facade do? Well. It's not a KO, but my god, it was freaking close to, and it's changing scales due to crit will KO Stoutland, but really, who cares? I do believe that damage output was really, that was, mm, was delicious, as Sandstream, of course, will take out the Smaug. So, he only got two months left, and so do I, so he's gonna bring Stretch you as I believe in Chuchu, and uh, I was really sure he wouldn't bring it, um, because I needed to set up with my Alakazam, that's the only way I'm gonna win this game, if anything. So I really have to switch or kill Chuchu, I can't, I, I can't uh, just risk it in case he Volt switch on me. As, um, with Sandstorm in his life, or he's going to fall next turn. So I'm just gonna bring Tassadar, and go for that sweet, sweet Call Mind, and then basically hope for best. Because as stated, depending on his set, he might actually survive the Shadow Ball from Alakazam. Even if I Mega Vault, it has a possibility of surviving because it is Assault Vested, and Assault Vested just puts it just over the edge of what I can actually consider dealing with. 
So as the sandstorm subside, the Dill Mines with the Ron Burgundy is gonna come in, and it all gonna boils down to whether or not this Shadow Ball will KO him. So we're just of course going to Mega Evolve, and I must say the animation looks so sweet on the Mega Evolution. These are probably the only thing that works fast, so I like Sam is gonna be of course Tassadar, the Steelworker, as uh, <laughs> we can go for that Shadow Ball. And luckily enough, I should say, it is enough to KO of course the Dill Mice. And we win here with just a shy of a 1-0, and really, really, I should say this, that I could have risked it with, of course, Alaka Sam, uh, after I, of course, set up the first time, but as I said, it is a roll against this Pokemon due to, depending on his set, it is just one of those things that can take a hit due to its pretty fair bulk, so I really couldn't risk it, and it came down to a pretty close game due to it. So yeah, I'm gonna be completely frank here when it comes to the Afterfoss, because there are actually one big play here, which definitely opened up the game wide open for me, and definitely makes me maneuver much more efficiently due to it, and that is the situation with this Tapu versus Gigalith. I, I'm pretty sure had to hidden gone for, you know, Horn Leech, Woodhammer, or possible Superpower, um, those three moves would probably KO me. While Superpower may be a roll, it is a roll in his favor, and... Um, yeah, him losing, of course, at uh, the top of Bolo uh, to the Heavy Slam just made it a lot easier for me to win this game because that made that Alaka Sam could more often than not KO whatever that was in. So while I am lucky winning this game due to that or prediction from Hayden, I still thought it was a very interesting game. And it's actually kind of nice seeing that Alaka Sam and Mega Alaka Sam, for that matter, are super relevant due to, of course, how the post. Uh, or how the meta turns out not right now for Pokebank to record Tracing, Beast Boosts. Though th that didn't happen this game, it still is a possibility, which oh, is just delicious. But Hayden, really, really thank you so much for this battle. It was definitely a blast, and it was very fun battling you again, and definitely a new meta. You are a wild card as ever, and it's always, you know, it's it's just great. I do, I do enjoy these games quite a lot. And for everybody else who's been watching, thank you for doing just so. And I will see you, of course, in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.